Listen, I want to talk to you, and I want you just put aside everything right now. And listen, this is a new season for all of us. Are you listening? This is a new season for every one of you. Mighty things are right ahead. You know, I feel that in my bones. When, when I heard and when I read that 21% of Jewish millennials believe that Jesus is, is the Son of God, I almost, I almost had, my, had my own rapture. Because, look, look, because I did not realize what's going on with the Jewish people. And they are the voice of prophecy today on earth. you got to understand, all of you guys, go take your seats for just about 10 minutes. Then you're going to come back. I'm going to call you right back. I have got to get this through to you, saints. Jesus is on the way. And before the coming of the Lord, we are going to see the greatest revival ever in the history of the world. Hallelujah. Please say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get ready for it. I'm telling you because now we're seeing what's happening out there. Prophetically, like the puzzle is coming together. So what must we do? We must prepare for revival. And every revival, prosperity comes with it. It's just a part of revival. Martin Luther, the great reformer back in Germany, said the devil will use two things to stop the gospel. Now this is from a German priest, guys. Not a Pentecostal preacher, okay? He said, the devil will use two things to stop the gospel. Number one, he'll raise tyrants. Or number two, he'll convince the church to stay poor. Wow. Yeah, that's what he said. We're talking 500 years ago. Wow. A German priest said that, not some prosperity teacher as they call us. Wow. He said, the devil will do two things to stop the gospel. It's in his books. Read it. He'll raise some tyrant, or he'll convince the church that poverty is God's will for him. Because the devil knows money is a weapon against him. Well, the Bible says it in Psalm 112, verse 10. It says, when the righteous are blessed, the wicked shall see it and be grieved and melt away. If you want to torment the devil, let prosperity come into your house. Because Satan knows money will be used as a weapon against him. Don't you get it? Yes. Look, the gospel is free, but the means to deliver the gospel right. is expensive. Right. Right. So we have to get ready to finance the gospel. Get ready for the day when God will speak to you to stand behind the preaching of the gospel in a way you've never been asked by heaven to do. Because we are going to see, my God, I feel anointing here. <laughs> we are going to see the gospel preached on a scale we've never seen before. Get ready for people to get saved in malls, in high schools, in colleges, in universities, on the streets of New York and Chicago and Los Angeles. <laughs> Give me a five. He's already talking in tongues. I love it. No, 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 this is going to happen because it shall come to pass in the last days. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy on the streets. Not in some little room locked up somewhere. So what do we do? We have to prepare. How? Ah, good question. The first answer is Proverbs 8.21. If you want God to prosper you, you want God to use you, you want to see yourself out of debt, dear Jesus, I feel the anointing. Ah, yes, it's here. He can do I'm telling you, I'm feeling the anointing on me. I want to just go lay hands on somebody right now. When you feel this anointing, you want to just go lay hands on people. I want to pray. I want to pray that that anointing will reach right through, right there, and touch your life. Jesus, we give you the praise. Come on, people. Lift your hands and Jesus, we give you the praise. Wow. All right. Proverbs 8, 21. What does it say? That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. I will fill their treasures. That's gospel. That's the Bible. God says, you love me, I'll bless you financially. You look at the Bible, you see the way God blessed Abraham. 
Isaac, Jacob, and those who loved him and did not bless. Prosperity never came to a wicked king. God blessed David. God blessed Solomon. He didn't bless Rehoboam that good. And then when he got into sin, he lost a whole lot. Not only 10 tribes. He lost so much the Babylonian. The Egyptian king came during the reign of Rehoboam and took all the gold out of his house. Why? Because of sin. That's why. Sin brings poverty. Get it in your head. Prosperity brings, it comes by the power of God. And the glory of God brings prosperity. And prosperity brings results, brings blessings. The gospel is preached. People are healed. People are saved. Whenever a king sat on the throne of Israel who was wicked, they were eating their babies. They were literally killing their own children for food. They didn't even have enough money to feed their own kids. Why? Sin. That I may cause those who love me to inherit substance. And I will fill their treasures. Not only substance, but treasures. When you love him, that's his word. I'm not giving you something else. That's, you cannot take it out of the Bible. It's there. It's there. A man came to Oral Roberts. He said, I don't believe all that stuff. I don't believe anything you preach on prosperity. So you know what Oral said? He said, take, take a scissors and cut every part out that mentions prosperity out of the Bible. A preacher came to Oral Roberts and said, I don't believe your message on prosperity. So Oral said, all right, here's a scissors. Go cut out every promise that mentions prosperity in the Bible. You know what that guy said? I can't do this. If I use the scissors, I'll be destroying the word of God. Oral said, that's what you do every time you say prosperity is not of God. That's what you do every time you say prosperity is not of God. You're cutting and destroying what? No different than taking that pair of scissors and cutting all the promises out. Oh, I'm going to say it again. Oral said, all right, here's a pair of scissors. If you don't believe in prosperity, then go ahead and cut out every promise out of the Bible. The guy said, I won't do this because then I'll be destroying the word of God. Oral said, that's what you do every time you say prosperity is not of God. You're taking it out of the Bible then. Number two. Yeah, wow was right. Let me hear. Wow, come on. Wow. Wow, I love this. Number two. Number two. Proverbs 20. Look, look what Proverbs 22 says. Come on, people. I mean, Proverbs 22 is going to really knock you out right now. Receive, verse 21 and 22. Acquaint not thyself with him. Be at peace, thereby peace will come, good will come. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. Lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, what does it say? You will have, you will be built up. You will have some strength in you. You'll put away iniquity far from your house. Now watch verse 24. Then, 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 ha, ha, shall thou lay up gold as dust. Ah. Wow. As the gold of a fear. That's the best gold you can find is the gold of a fear. And you'll have, you, <laughs> as the stones of the brooks, the Almighty will be your defense. Watch this, watch this. And you're going to have plenty of silver too, not just gold. So the second key is the word, the word, the word. When you see the Bible in people's lives, prosperity is always there. Why would God bless Abraham? When he went down to Egypt and told Pharaoh, well, that's, <laughs> that's my sister. And then he got rebuked. And then Pharaoh discovers it's really his wife. Now, he paid him all this money, wanted to marry her, before he, he found out she's not really his sister. So, now, he, he gives him back his wife, and he never asks back for the money. He kept his wife and the money. God prospered him still. Why would God prosper Isaac? During famine, guys, come on. Here's the next-door neighbor. His land is dying. It's all brown. And here's Isaac across the way, just a fence between them, and it's all green. Prosperity came during famine because he 
loved God and his word. And the Bible says when you love God, nothing will affect you, not even famine, earthquakes, or anything else on earth. God will protect you. A thousand will fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand. It shall not come nigh thee. Only with your eye you'll behold what's going to go on to the wicked. Why? Because you are a man of God. You are his child. God takes care of his own. Now the word of God, don't you guys feel the anointing here? My God, man, I'm feeling it. I felt it from the seconds in us saying. Now watch, listen. I'm going to have you go to your phones, but just hold it. Don't do it now till I tell you. Because when you go to your, to your phones, it's going to go wham over here with that on it. God's going to bless you more than you've ever been blessed in your life. When I hear that 21% of the Jewish young people, when I believe Jesus is Messiah, I'm thinking Jesus is really quickly on the way. And before the Lord comes, the church will prosper because the church has to prosper to finance the end time harvest. How can we see them all saved if we don't have the money to give to, to, to God's work? Come on. I will bless you, God says to Abraham, and I'll make you a blessing. Not just bless you, I'll make you a blessing. And I'm here to prophesy. Millions of dollars are about to flow through your hands as long as your hands don't get sticky. I'm going to say it again. Millions of dollars are going to flow through your hands as long as your hands don't get sticky. God will bless giving hands, not sticky hands. You better write that down and use it. You write that down, brother. God uses giving hands, not sticky hands. Not sticky hands. God. Yeah, brother. Giving hands, not sticky hands. He doesn't ever bless a sticky hand. Only giving hands are blessed. A channel of blessing. Now. Yeah, you're writing it down. I love it. Number three. <laughs> But, but look what it says about the world. The world will bring gold and silver in abundance. The gold of fear. Uh, Stop believing for little stuff. Uh, yeah. Our God is a big God. Yes. Say big. No, 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 not big. Big God. He's bigger than any problem you'll ever face. He's bigger than your money problems, family problems, marriage problems, whatever, whatever problems. He's bigger than all of it. And quit limiting God. Yes. Don't you dare ask for a cup full when the ocean belongs to you. Think about that. Think about that. Don't you dare ask God for a little cup when the ocean is yours out there. Maro kanta palbi mano. God gave us the ocean, not the cup. Yes. Not the cup. Yes. The whole ocean out there, the blessings of God belong to you 100% as the waters cover the sea. Quit believing God for some little amount. God wants to bless you with prosperity. Your cup will run over. That's what Jesus said. Come on. Your cup. The, the, God blessed Israel so much through the reign of David and Solomon that gold became like rocks on the streets. Imagine, imagine, they, they got so blessed that gold was equal to stone and rocks. Oh, that's prosperity. Here's the third key and the most difficult one. People don't like to obey this one, but it's in the, in the, in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Job 36, 11. I love this one because I've seen it work in my life. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend uh, their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. You try to take that, that wonderful promise out of the Bible. I'll see what, uh, no way. If they obey, ah, uh, obedience, that's the part that people don't like. You have to obey. If it doesn't hurt, it doesn't work. Now my wife, come here, Dadal, my sweet darling. Let them see how much we're in love. Hallelujah. Give me a beautiful dance. Oh, my, my, my. Stop, 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 stop. Do I love you? Yes. Do you, do you love me? I adore you. How much? Uh, my whole being. Now, 
We were divorced for three years. It was the most painful. Oh, my Jesus. Oh, terrible time in my life and her life. Why did we divorce? Ah, oh, long story. Long, long story. No need to go through it. It can happen to anybody. What happened to us can happen to anybody. Ah, oh, just can, can happen to a billion people out there. Because, you know, you can't look. Marriage has got to be worked on, you know? We, we, we learned happy lessons, and now we're happy, thank God. But when we went through our divorce, we lost a lot of money. Sue and I bought a home over here in Temecula on the mountains because Suzanne wanted to always live by the mountains. We lost that house. We lost our savings. We lost, oh my goodness, how much did we do? So much. Lots of it. Now Sue is in Orlando. I'm here. Everything is horrible. Divorce is terrible. I go see my pastor, Jack Hayford. Because I needed someone to pray with me, you know. Yeah, that's right. She loves Guillermo Maldonado. I like Jack Hayford. <laughs> I like Pastor Anna Maldonado. And yeah, yeah. And she love, we love them both, by the way. And she loves Anna Maldonado, uh, Guillermo's wife and her a a friend. So she goes to see Guillermo. I go to see Pastor Jack. And I said, pray for me. Now the man is praying over me. And he's praying real hard. <laughs> You'd love this because he was shaking my hair. And nobody touches my hair. <laughs> Except maybe my wife. Well, he, he's got his hands on my head doing, you know, I'm doing it. And my neck is. <laughs> and God speaks to me. And the Lord says, honor him. Not give him, honor him. With $2,000 every month for the rest of his life. I'm thinking, Lord. Is this you? Are you sure this is you? Now, Lord, surely that you can't be telling me that because I just lost my house and savings and a whole lot more. And was just told by the lawyer, because see, Sue and I, we, we were fighting so bad, we just had the lawyers fight. Big mistake, you know. And, you know, and the lawyers, of course, all they want is whatever. You, I think you all know. You know. You know. My lawyer tells me, she says, well, this is going to cost you at least $600,000 for the divorce. I said, why? Why will I have to pay all this money? Well, because you're high profile. So we just lost the house, savings, and now the lawyer tells me I have to come up with $600,000 to pay the legal fees. They went up to seven eighty-seven, by the way, because I, I had to pay her legal fees. So now... I'm, I'm real upset. Like, how am I going to make it? So let me go see Pastor Jack. Maybe he can give me a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, pray over me, give me some peace. He's praying, and God says, honor him with $2,000 a month for the rest of his life. First, <laughs> first thought that hit my mind was, I wonder how long he'll live. Yeah, I mean, he, 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 was, he was in his 70s. I'm thinking, my God, if he lives to be 100, I'm in trouble. Sweet Lord Jesus. You really are. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. So I said, uh, so I got up and I said, Pastor, the Lord just spoke to me and told me to honor you with $2,000 every month for the rest of your life, not knowing he just st stepped down. Uh, from, his, from his pulpit because of his age, so he didn't make as much money, and they were paying him less money, and what he needed was exactly 2000 a month. They took 2000 out of his paycheck a month, and here God tells me to give him 2000 not knowing that's what he needed. Yeah! So he looks at me and says, Now, Benny, God will honor you. Amen. I get in my car. I'm going to university. Oh, Jesus, thank you for that. My God, I'm going to university. And the Lord says, because you obeyed me today, all your losses will stop. And we just lost the house, savings, all that. He says, because you obeyed me, all your losses will stop. Give me a kiss. Oh, I adore this girl. So he said, all your losses will stop. And then he said, and then, and then he said, the Lord said, the Lord said. He says, because you obeyed me, restoration is coming. 
I'm not thinking marriage. I'm thinking money. I'm thinking God's going to restore, you know, all the money I lost. But God had bigger ideas. But you can't pay for miracles. Only, only, only a fool believes you can pay for miracles. But what, what God looked at, Sue, and as you know, is my obedience. He said, okay, be, 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 because Benny obeyed, as the Bible says you obey, I'm going to bless him. Not only that the losses will stop, not only that the restoration will come. And then he said something that amazed me. He said, because you obeyed me, abundance is coming. Wow. Seven days later. Seven days later, guys. We had a conference here. A couple from Texas came and attended the conference. One of my, one of my board members came and said, they want to see you. So I went over to the lobby of the hotel. And uh, the couple said, the lady said, they introduced themselves. I had not met them before. Well, I saw them, but we never talked. The lady said, Pastor Benny, can I talk to you? I said, yeah. She said, the Lord spoke to us very powerfully. And then she said, God gave me a dream. And she saw where she was standing over here, and I'm here, and she was holding my hands up like that. And her husband was on the other side with their pastor and holding his hands up. And the Lord said, pay all Benny's debts. Wow. Pay all their debts. So they obeyed. The Lord spoke to the lady in a dream to the man outside a dream. They both agreed. And they said to me, the Lord told us to pay all your debts, your wife and use debts. I'm like, is this for real? This is seven days later. Wow. They gave me a check right there, right there in the lobby, 65000 to just start paying off the debts. Within a year, and then when the, when the bills came every month from the lawyers, I kind of got embarrassed because I'd call and say, there's, there's another bill, what do I do with it? He said, well, send it to me. Finally, the man said, he said, now you tell your lawyer to quit sending you the bill and send it to our house. Wow. They gave Sue and I seven hundred and eighty seven thousand dollars paid all our debts within a year then i then he said to me would you come to our home and pray so i said okay so i flew and prayed with them and on the way to the airport this sweet man looks he says pastor benny may i, may I tell you something else i said well of course he saw the lord spoke to us again and in my heart i thought praise the lord <laughs> speak lord hallelujah and then he said, the Lord told my wife and I to now gi start giving you a check every month for the rest of your lives, Sue and I. My wife and I have been getting a check from that couple since 2010, seven years ago. Because that's when I obeyed. So I am still sending my check to Pastor Jack. Every third week, my check for 2000 goes out. Every first week of the month, their check comes, and it's a lot more than 2000 Everything God said, guys, everything God said to me happened. The loss has stopped. Now we have another house in Florida. <laughs> Paid for. Glory be to Jesus. Yeah, glory be to Jesus. Sue and I are happier than we've ever been. We love each other like crazy. Oh, last night, she fixed me the best chicken I ever had. Oh, brother, that was marvelous. That was the best salad I ever, Israeli salad I ever had. How, how you fixed that was marvelous. Well, God restored us, and the money we lost. And now every month that check comes, abundance. Now, now, God wants to do the same for you. Yes, 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 yes. you're going to stand here and pray with me for the people right now. Come on, stretch your hands with me, baby. Father, in the name of Jesus. What you did for Sue and I, do it for the people watching. Right now, Lord. Right now, in Jesus' name, pick up that phone and start calling. Start calling that number. Because when you begin to call, heaven will act on your behalf. The second you pick up that phone and say, I want God to do the same for me that he's done for Ben and Suzanne. And we are believing God for three things for you. Number one, no more losses in your life. Number two, restoration in your life. 
Number three, abundance to come back to your life. Yeah. If you believe that, and it's an act of faith you're about to do, and it's an act of faith you're, you're about to take. This, this, this is not some holy baloney, hot air stuff. This is real. Yes. Because it's God's word. Yes, think about it. Or we believe the word or we don't believe the word. And I chose to believe the word. When God spoke to me in that car, it didn't look like, it did not look like that I would have what God promised me. When, 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 when he said, your losses will, will stop, I was already shaken up by the things we lost and the crazy stuff going on. And she and I were not exactly at peace when, when, when God said that. When, when, when God said restoration, it was hard to believe it. When the Lord said abundance, that was really hard to believe it. But I believed. I sowed that two thousand dollars with with a struggle in my heart. I did not want to do it. I did not want to give it. I was hurting. I was angry. I was confused. But I obeyed. Raw faith on my part. Raw faith, because we had lost everything. And to give that two thousand a month, I'm thinking. You know, if God should have said like one time, okay, I can do it, but every month for the rest of that man's life is a long time. Yeah, right. Who knows? But God knew what he was doing. Yes. That's right. The thing, Benny, that is so amazing about obedience is, and that's one thing that I remembered as a child and even as an adult looking in my mom's Bible. Anytime it says if, my mom always circled if and said my choice because God will not go against our will or our choice. Otherwise, we're robots. So when we decide to obey with our choice and our will, Talk to him right there, literally like Malachi 3 says, 310, the Bible promises that he will open up the windows of heaven yeah. and he will rebuke the devourer for your now, sake. Let, let's agree with them right now for those three things, okay? All of you stand up, pray behind me in the Holy Ghost. And I mean, pray out loud in the Holy Ghost. Father, we agree in Jesus' name, so and I agree. All the losses will stop in their life the second they pick up that phone. Father, we, my God, I feel the anointing here. Lord, we agree right now that when they pick up that phone, restoration will begin in their life too. When they pick up that phone and call and make that pledge or sow that seed, abundance will begin to come their way in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we agree now that this anointing that's in the studio will go right through that camera, right through that TV set, and touch every one of them. In the UK, in Nigeria, in South Africa, all over Africa, in the US, Canada, around the world, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we're asking for miracles to begin in the next seven days. Lord, like you did it for me, seven days, I'm asking for a seven day miracle. It's gonna start in seven days. People of God, lift your hands and believe God with me. It's gonna begin in seven days. Just like in, it, with me when I sowed that seed, seven days later, I, 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 I met that couple. Seven days later, they gave me a check for 65,000. Seven days later, my miracle began. And the spirit of prosperity, because again, you were obedient to Matthew 3.10, Literally, the Lord was able to rebuke the devourer and that spirit of poverty that was stealing from you and stealing from and continues to steal from God's children. Is we rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. We re pray in tongues, baby. We rebuke that spirit of, of, of lack. The devourer will stop devouring now in Jesus' name. Satan, stop devouring God's people's money. Stop taking what belongs to them. Let the anointing of God right now Break that yoke in Jesus' holy name of their life. Father, we believe for miracles right now. We believe for miracles in Jesus' name. And as Sinash sings, you call, you pick up that phone. You make that blessed act of faith right now. Pick up that phone. Go online. Do it now. I'm going to go back there and pray with you. I'm telling you, I feel that anointing like fire on me. I feel that anointing like fire on me. Sinash, come on, darling. Take us to the throne of God, and you call right now. Come on, let's go. Somebody rejoice and bless the name of the Lord. Uh, there is nothing impossible, nothing impossible, for he is able. Hallelujah.
and I testify. 